Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready for more propaganda? Well, you're in the wrong place at the right time. Colombo Chronicles is for critical thinkers. Let's welcome the consumer advocate for justice. Here's the Rose, Rose Colombo. Hi, everyone. It is the Rose, Rose Colombo, right here for you every Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. and time for lunch and a break, or 3 to 4 p.m. and time for late lunch or dinner or a break. And um, we're here for you every Wednesday. And we've also included the Justice Club, which uh, sometimes we just talk about justice or injustice because we all know there's very little justice, not only in America, but around the world. So what happened to the word justice? The Justice Club is back on Colombo Chronicles live podcast. Join Rose Colombo at noon and find out what tips she will provide in a world of little justice. That's right. You will find out what tips and information when we discuss justice on Colombo Chronicles of uh, what little justice there is, but those tips are very important and could save a life or save your uh, financial assets or keep your children in uh, your custody. So many things. I'm a longtime advocate for justice. Some people call me a crusader for justice in the media. Whichever, it's all the same. Advocate or crusader, we're all seeking some justice, not little justice. And um, today, I have a really special guest. Uh, Her name, and she's a returning guest, and her name is Barbara Charis, C-H-A-R-I-S, like Sam, Barbara Charis. And she has a new new article on substack.com. And it's entitled Journey to Wellness. And I thought because of all of the skyrocketing costs of food today and the fear mongering since 2019 during the lockdowns where we saw the grocery shelves empty uh, and um, people hoarding food and fighting over food uh, was really a real rude awakening of injustice on America and the world. But we saw it firsthand. We were even threatened that if we didn't uh, obey uh, the powers that be, that um, we would be arrested or we could be um, have our businesses destroyed uh, or we can even enter into a school or a grocery store. Isn't that interesting? So starvation is another way to depopulate the planet, of course. And it has been done uh, to different tribes since time began. So it's not something new to history, but it is something new in America. And I didn't like it. And how how did you feel about that? Uh, I thought it was horrifying and crimes against humanity, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. And um, because of all of that, I did write a very special book just for you, the world, humanity, because it's not just a book. It actually is a message for humanity worldwide. It will expand your minds, open up your mind to think outside of the box. And I think we all need to do that. So I wrote this book. And it is an international Irwin Award winning book, which I'm very proud of and humbled by those who um, knew Irwin Zucker, who um, awarded me that particular Award, which is close to my heart because he passed away uh, in late 2022. And uh, we all miss him very, very much. He was a dynamic public relations manager and he was the 
founder of the book publicist of Southern California. And for 40, I think it was 46 years, uh, he held meetings every other month of uh, media people, and especially those in the industry of publishing and promotion and marketing and authors. It was He was a fabulous, fabulous man. And so um, my book, Obamasaurus, is pretty popular if you want to go back and read complimentary pages or you want to um, read the reviews and um, the five-star reviews. So here is a little touch about Obamasaurus. Obamasaurus, the new book by Rose M. Colombo, is an updated version of a political satire that reflects the political roadmap of today's world, written with an Orwellian twist. Will humanity survive or suffer depopulation or extinction? Obamasaurus by Rose M. Colombo, available at Amazon.com. Yes, and while you're on Amazon.com, look up Is America Under Martial Law? And that is um, by yours truly, Rose um, Colombo. And that's with an O, C-O-L-O-M-B-O. Is America Under Martial Law? Well, it is an exploration of the mind, and it includes research, it includes credible quotes, laws, and theory, and how is it possible that America could be under martial law, or is it possible, without disclosure to the public by enacting and signing off on an executive order, uh, a secret executive order, so that the public can't figure out how the borders are open or how they can violate constitutional law or violate our human rights. Um, It is a mind-boggling book that uh, my former agent, Erwin Zucker, said, is America under martial law and Obamasaurus is going to shock a lot of people around the world. And it appears that it is. So open up your minds and look up on Google, Google Obamasaurus by Rose M. Colombo and Is America Under Martial Law by Rose M. Colombo on Amazon. And you can read complimentary pages and reviews of the five stars. So on that note, I am going to take a little break. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to introduce our guest, Barbara Cheris, and we're going to get started in the world of authors and experts and information that affects all of humanity, not just in America, but around the world, too. Howdy, folks. Just stopped in by my favorite restaurant, the Horseshoe Cafe. I highly recommend the home-cooked hot meals and piping hot coffee. In fact, it reminds me of my mom's home cooking when I was growing up. The customer service is excellent. Be sure to save room for the world's best desserts. Make sure you try a slice of fresh homemade pie. The Horseshoe Cafe is located at 154 East 4th Street in the heart of Benson, Arizona. The Horseshoe Cafe is right outside of Tombstone, Sierra Vista, and Tucson. Sometimes, Patty and Mike stop by to welcome you. The staff at the Horseshoe Cafe looks forward to seeing you. Stop by to eat or relax. Cool down in the desert with a cold beer or your favorite cocktail. That's the Horseshoe Cafe. Oh, and don't tell anyone I told you, but some people think it's haunted. One thing is for sure. Be sure to bring your appetite. Colombo Chronicles Live. Colombo is on their trail. Listen up at Colombo Chronicles Live. That's right. Listen up to Colombo Chronicles Live because every Wednesday we invite a very special, prominent, expert or author or both on a myriad of topics. It can be from crime to the mafia to constitutional rights to human rights to love and romance and even sex and uh, 
we all know that word. <laughs> it's always in the in the um, news now. <laughs> that has become a political issue <laughs> in our country, and uh, I mean it could include romance. It could include um, health and wellness, and that's what we're going to talk about today. In fact, with Barbara Cheris, and you can find her at barbacheris dot substack dot com forward slash journey to wellness or you can google her name barbara charis c h a r i s and i'm going to tell you a little bit about our returning guest she is dynamic and she was born in pittsburgh to robert edward and clara al wakefield she is a student in pennsylvania state university in 1953 and the University of Pittsburgh, um, Student Harbor College, Wilmington, California, 1966. She's a master in holistic health science, Columbia Pacific University, San Rafael, California, in 1982. Her career includes director, consultant of Cheris Holistic Center in North Hollywood, California, since 1982. She is a health researcher since 1961, and she has many achievements, including she's been listed as a noteworthy nutritionist, consultant, medical researcher by the wonderful Marquis Who's Who. And so on that note, now that you know a little more about our very special guest, we will enter into the world of authors and experts, and let's just say hello and talk about our topic, how to survive food shortages and high cost in today's crazy world. So let's say hello to Barbara. Hi, Barbara. How are you doing today? Yeah, good morning. I'm doing great. Thank you. And how are you doing, Rose? How are you doing? (laughs) Well, (laughs) actually, I'm doing great because I just got a... um, (laughs) I just got a, a a copy of the catalog of my book coming out in May called Dressing Up and Dressing Down. Thank you for asking. And I'm so excited about it because they did a beautiful article in the catalog. And out of 34 books, it hit number nine for the International London Book Fair where it's being presented and uh, we're – Everyone who's anyone in the in the book industry and film industry is there, and they will get a catalog from the Regency Publishers of New York and London. And um, the book is, let me just tell you a little bit, since it's coming up in May, Dressing Up and Dressing Down in America captures the lifestyle and fashions from the Leave it to Beaver days that led Americans to dress up. But as time went by, they left the dress codes behind. Enjoy a blast from the past when Americans lived in safe neighborhoods behind secure borders and America's fashion designers were exuding talent around the world competing with Milan, Paris, and London in today's world of economic distress. But in today's world, they are competing against... um, the economic distress and globalism and excessive costs for materials, labor, and uh, the knockout, knockoffs by foreign nations. So it's important for Americans to support American fashion designers and keep Americans fashion all American since we are now a globalist world. And so thank you for asking, um, Barbara, because that gave me an opportunity to to be um, able to tell our audience about this wonderful um, um, book that's coming out in May, Dressing Up and Dressing Down, and, and it's so important. It sounds because very what would we do, Barbara, without the What would we do without the uh, fashion industry, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. I think it should mean something to people because – uh, I am really for buying American, and I think we have to uh, support our industry. You know, uh, we're going out of business because we're supporting everybody else around the world. 
Yes, major, major clothing stores that have been all American, business owners who families, generational, or they sold them to other people who were major stores have gone out of business since 2019 or even before that, but major ones went out in 2019. Others are still struggling from the lockdowns. And we have become so dependent on other nations like China, for example, uh, and who did the knockoffs on a lot of our fashion designers' purses and shoes and belts and so forth and sold them on the black market for a lot less and really undermined our American world of fashion and designers, which really hurt. And now with the globalism, we also have textiles. And uh, in the book, I wrote about the water, the cotton, and the textiles that now with globalism could re- are really being coming a challenge with the import and export and lockdowns and wars and everything else that we used to be, Barbara, dependent on ourselves, right? For food right, and clothing. Right. Right. So we really uh, gone in I'll the wrong say, direction. I'll say this that Obama that uh, uh Biden's administration, even before Biden was giving China uh, um trade you know, the trade was um uh, used to be in our favor. He gave it away to other countries so that it's making we're not making anything and other countries we're supporting them and this is not the way it should be not only have we always supported other countries barbara i mean with our tax dollars but now our cost of living has skyrocketed and people i read just recently barbara are shopping at the dollar stores for food and shopping at the Goodwill because of the skyrocketing cost for Americans, along with the 35 million plus illegals that we are forced to support. And I just read they're thinking about giving Social Security to them. If Americans aren't upset and outraged by what is going on since actually when Bill Clinton opened the borders, Uh, to China, opened the Long Beach Navy base and the um, Naval Station and the uh, port uh, so that China could access international waters into our country freely, which was against the law, in my opinion. Uh, When it comes to international waters, they should stay in their own line and division of where those waters end when it comes to the USA to be safe. And now we are no longer safe because we know we have spies all over our country too. So all of these things have been affecting our country slowly but surely they have been taking us down. So Barbara, I wanted to talk about your wonderful article on Journey to Wellness. Uh, It's your Barbara's newsletter, Journey to Wellness in Subset. Substack, I'm sorry, substack.com. And so I read that in um, 1973, I'm sorry, 1973, uh, you became a vegetarian overnight after reading Health Secrets from Europe by Dr. Pavel Irola. And uh, it convinced you uh, to slow down, um, to learn how to slow down the aging process and remove certain things out of your diet. So what did what impressed you about that book and what well, did you what, give up? What I impressed me was the fact that um you can slow down the aging process by by simply eating foods that are compatible with your body. And I started coming across other books about the compatibility of food with your bloodstream and that actually if you eat the foods that are compatible, it takes away stress from your body and that you can overcome disease. Now, I went 13 years without one, or more than that, maybe 20 years without one sniffle until I started eating something that I knew wasn't good for me, but I it was putting some half and half in my coffee. 
and I, I had given up coffee for over uh, 24 years. And then I went back to drinking coffee, and I couldn't drink it black, so I put some half and half in. In 30 days, I was so sick, I was in bed for over two weeks, just from one item that I shouldn't have in my diet. So you, you learn the hard way. Uh, I learned the hard way that, you know, I, I had totally given up dairy, and then I went back to it just putting a little bit in coffee every day, and then I got sick. So you can avoid sickness uh, I would say the major foods to keep away from would be dairy and grains. Now, people have been uh, laboring under the idea that grains are so good for you, but there are so many books on the market right now, anti-grains, and one of the best is called Dangerous Ga uh, Grains by James Braley, who's an MD, and Ron Hogan, MA. And this book lists... 200 diseases that are uh, caused by eating grains. So if you can get grains out of your diet because they do turn to sugar in your body and they are a source of, of diabetes and people don't realize that you can prevent disease by not eating the foods that cause them. And so this is what I was learning uh, for many, many years, I kept coming across wonderful books, but it was like one of the first I read um, was by a man by the name of Jay Hoffman, and he wrote um, uh, The Missing Link in the Medical Curriculum, Nutrition in Regard to the Food. And he said there is a, um, this is the first time I ever read about food chemistry and blood chemistry. And when you get into understanding what it does when you eat the wrong food, uh, it will prevent you from, you know, making a step that you know is going to create disease. So you have it in your hands, the ability to prevent yourself from getting ill. This is what I yeah. learned when I started reading. Well, that's amazing because, you know, they have actually dumbed down the kids from reading and writing and arithmetic which were the basics, and uh, that gets you through life. And um, just those basics, you have to read and love to read and learn to read and teach kids to do that because you get more out of reading anything else if you're reading the right books. And, um, you, I mean, you can get a college degree on your own just reading the right books. So giving up on coffee, okay, and dairy, and then... Um, what about you also say you gave up meat and fish and poultry when doctors always say to eat some meat and fish and poultry? <laughs> well, people have the idea that you get energy from uh, meat, and actually it's from carbohydrates that you get energy. But the right carbohydrates are, high, are ones that are not processed. And processed food has wiped out the nutrients in it. It has no water in it. And when you eat enough of the fruit and vegetables, you're going to get natural organic water. And that water has minerals in it. But you've got to keep away. You don't need that much food. Um, uh, you don't need the 2,000 calorie diet that is being promoted if you eat the right food. So that if you, you know, talk about saving money, if you eat the right food, you won't, you won't suffer. You won't need doctors. Um, you can save money that way. So it, it pays to buy organic today. Uh, once upon a time, everything was organic before the pesticides in Monsanto and the glyphosate came in. Everything was organic maybe 150 years ago. But now uh, we have to pay extra for organic, which is natural. It means you don't really need the pesticides. And if you think of regular conventional food, um, you don't really want it. You want to go to a natural food that has no pesticide, that's grown in the right or may, 
method without organic fertilizer. And the organic fertilizer is it doesn't provide you with the nutrients. So when you're eating conventional food, you're paying for something that has no nutritional value. So this well, is important. Yeah, what's interesting about that is that um, when we were kids, I mean, we were just going because there was lots of fruit trees and uh, lots of land where there were strawberry patches and orange groves and uh, because my parents would uh, take us on Sunday sometimes after church and drive through the, um, we called it the countryside because it had strawberry patches and orange groves and, and all this stuff growing. You could see the cows and the dairies and all that before all the cement and uh, came came about. And um, we had fruit trees in our backyard so did everybody else in the neighborhoods. And uh, lots of trees actually even lined up along the streets for shade and beauty. And um, uh, because we didn't have air conditioners um, in my home, and so the the trees really helped. And the thing is that we would just go in the backyard and pick fruit off the trees and eat, eat it. Sometimes we washed it, sometimes we didn't, because <laughs> kids, you know. And we were mm-hmm. super healthy. I know we didn't you know. need we didn't have uh, when I was growing up any of the electronics that are going on today, and uh, we we just we didn't need supervision. No, no, a uh, little league um, uh, organization. We just went down to a field and started playing. You know, um, softball. A gun, bunch of kids got together. No, no adult. Uh, just um, us, and um, we didn't have a lot of fruit trees where we were growing up, but later on, I had a friend that lived down in San Pedro, and we used to go walking around the neighborhood, and they would have some fruit trees, and one of the trees we came across were sapota. You know what a sapota fruit is like? No. The sapota, it's like custard. And, and we found a couple trees. This is back about 40 years ago. And so we used to just gather the fruit right off the tree. And it's like, um, it's one of the richest sources of protein there is. I think there's nine grams of protein per pound, which is a, a, a hefty amount of protein in a fruit. Banana has 5.4. Apple is about 1.9. So the Zapota was very loaded with uh, protein. And people think that fruit doesn't have protein, but it does. And um, they could actually, you know, uh, live on fruit if they had fruit trees. There are, um, we do need supplements, though. We need supplements. Um you know, we're talking about living on less, but eating foods that give you more nutrients. And when you go to the market and you're buying processed foods, you're not really getting the nutrients. You're getting artificial uh, supplements uh, in there, you know, like the artificial, uh, probably they put the cheapest vitamins in the food you're eating, so it's not going to be doing you much good. And when we look at what Americans look like today uh, from eating all the processed foods, they're not healthy. No. So if um, you eat, you didn't, eat you, right. You didn't, you didn't see that many chubby kids like you do today. And, I, you know, if you're going in the mall, you see all these kids eating all this junk food and they're way overweight, and that has to be hard on their hearts and then their self-esteem, too, especially when they get into preteens and teenage years. And so, I, you know, that's, you know, the parents should be more concerned about that, I think, about their health, their child's health. And um, also, um, you know, the, the cigarette industry also, and even doctors, because I was looking at old, ma- I, I collect some old magazines from, you know, 40s and 50s because I just think they're so amazing, and um, and and even the 60s too. And so, as you look back, and everything was so different. I mean, you can see so much about history if you look at the the um, newspapers and 
on the uh, advertisements and the old magazines, and you could see the difference in what's happening. Uh, and and back then, they had ads that were promoting pregnant women to smoke cigarettes by doctors. I mean, it was so shocking to me to see that. I was like, what the heck? And And so over the years, they even had the medical profession promoting cigarettes. And then, you know, we knew of the big scandal that happened with the cigarettes companies and the big lawsuits Mm -hmm. because of the cancer and lung cancer and so forth. And um, so these addictions like cigarette smoking and alcoholism um, also are, you know, I mean, even if you're eating good foods, don't they really deplete the vitamins and the supplements that people are eating, even if it's healthy food? Oh, yes. You're right. You're right. Uh, people don't understand that if you don't food, you're not going to even nourish your brain. And a lot of these children, on um, the processed foods and the beverages they're drinking, the soda, which wipes out sugar in the food, uh, takes nutrients in order to be processed so they're losing everything they have when they uh mentally and they and we've lowered the ability of the brain to learn in this country whereas we used to be high in math and science we've gone to the very lowest and i was shocked to find that america is now 45th in world health So it says a lot about what's been going on in this country the last 60 years. Because 60 years ago, we used to be tops in math and science, and now our children cannot think. Yeah, I think people have to think about that. Yeah, and I'm sorry too. Like in the schools, that they used to have um, hire people cooks. To uh, to cook the home the food whole foods and uh, in the cafeterias and they always had like a green vegetable or salad or something and um, and then they went to um, you know the the prepackaged junk foods where kids could just buy the prepackaged junk foods. Uh, if they didn't pack a lunch, if their parents didn't pack a lunch for them or they didn't pack a lunch for themselves. So, I mean, little by little, things began to change into, I think, into these fast food agendas where people were getting used to not eating home-cooked meals with whole foods. What do you think? Because do you think that also was a, a, a an agenda that was moving forward in our country. Oh, definitely. You're absolutely right. Uh, People didn't take the time to prepare at home, and it was more convenient for them to buy the fast foods, but they didn't realize the fast foods had no nutrient value, so their children were suffering, and they were suffering too. And along with it is the body sets up a craving when you're not getting the nutrients you want, so you keep wanting to eat more food. So it's a vicious cycle when you don't get the nutrients you need. And people today, maybe it's going to be good because during World War II, when they had rationing in different countries, heart disease dropped because they rationed meat, they rationed butter, they uh, 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 they rationed the foods that were creating problems, and then the people became healthier. And if you have a limited budget, you've got to put your money into fruit and vegetables. And also, um, I was thinking, um, we we were out of the we didn't go into the market. We were, we were amazed for three weeks because we did stock up the last time we were. We went there, but I do buy through a company called Vitacost, and they have uh, a lot of foods that are uh, health foods that don't have any sodium in there. So if people want to 
uh, stock up a little bit on nutrition, nutritional foods. They do have sales where you can get 20% off of the food. So when you can buy food at 20% off, uh, stock up because you know the prices are only going to go up in the future. So this is, this oh, is what I do. Mm-hmm. Once once they so, go up, they don't seem to come down. <laughs> nope. Once they go up, they don't come back. So what we do, like, for example, they have uh, soup, and there's no sodium in it. It's one of the best soups, I believe, uh, on the market. It's called Health Valley. And um, I don't want sodium in my food because sodium uh, retains fluid in the body. And I learned from my father, who died of heart disease, that he was eating too many foods with sodium in it, and then his heart could not pump his waterlogged butt blood. And so this is what caused his death. So sodium, you know, the, the RDA for sodium is 2,000 or 2,200 milligrams, and that standard has been changed because when I started studying nutrition, they said... 400 to 500 milligrams was fine, and that was back like over 60 years ago. And now it's 2,200 milligrams, and we've got people dying of heart disease, like in mouse, you know. So the well, standards it, have been changed. Yeah, I think it's like uh, 550,000 people die every year in the United States from heart attacks. And um, there were strokes, and and so uh, that was interesting to me because um, you know you somebody can look like my daughter's neighbor looked like the epitome of health. He was probably in his fifties, and he went out and jogged every morning, and he looked like he was you know really in good shape. He got to his front lawn, and he dropped over dead. And uh, mm. from heart attack. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you just don't know even by looking at somebody. So maybe it was his diet, right? Oh, even definitely. though he looked super it, healthy. Ninety-five percent of the time, illness is created by diet, and doctors don't study it in med school, which is like uh, probably because of uh, Rockefeller. You know what he did in the early 1900s. You know, took nutrition out of the school because they wanted more sick people. Yeah, I was. They don't study um, it. Right, I was in the beauty industry for a long time, and um, I remember asking doctors, you know, um, do you think we should take supplements and vitamins and. Uh, and they'd look at me like I was from outer space, you know, and they'd say, well, we don't really study nutrition, supplements, and vitamins. And so that opened my eyes a lot because uh, I was like, you don't study supplements and vitamins because that's how your body's healthy and your immune system and nutrition. I mean, that boggled my mind, I mean, for, for a long, long time, you know, I was like, and so it was interesting to me that um, now you see their names on all sorts of vitamins. Same thing with skin care because I would go into their offices and if they were a foot doctor, I'd bring, because I had a skin care line and a spa, I'd bring my, um, my creams and I'd be like uh, trying to sell them on selling it to their customers, you know, because... Mm-hmm. Um, your feet still need to be moisturized and and kept soft and you know subtle and stuff. And um, I mean, you're, what do you? I always just tell people like, well, what would you do without your feet? You need to take care of your feet. <laughs> you know, they start laughing. You know? Never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so, um, but they too would look at me like, you know, I was from out of this was during the nineties. It was like uh, from out of space. And well, we don't we don't sell skin care, you know. Well, now every one of them found out the profit margin, and they all stuck their names on all these uh, skin care products, and they get a movie star to promote it, and uh, they put a lot of um, 
you know, estheticians with their own skincare line who went through school and went through a lot of workshops with the doctors and, and like I did, and they paid for the advanced dermal, advanced uh, skincare school and all that stuff. And, um, I mean, if it's competition, you know, to have a doctor's name on a skincare product and then a movie star promoting it, who probably never used the product, but, you know, they're promoting it and marketing it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Making That's a lot of money. Sure. I mean they mm-hmm. they put a lot of um of uh estheticians and salon uh and spa owners uh out of their out of you know, reducing their sales because when somebody sees Doctor M D on a product, they automatically think that's the one, you know what I'm saying? So they ended mm-hmm. up being the competition to those of us who were in the skincare business and um and and it's and and prior to that they 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 said oh i don't even one not even just one more several doctors said oh i don't even think we're allowed to sell skincare so you know because they were only into prescription drugs so this is how things right. have changed it all became money it all actually my whole point was it's about the money right it's the always profit. the money you know, yeah. that's for sure. But uh, if people made a list of the very necessary foods that they need that do have the nutrients in it, and, you know, in order to to be able to buy uh, foods, you don't want to buy processed foods because processed foods are more expensive, but they don't have the nutrients that you need. So what you want to do is eat buy foods that will last for a while in your refrigerator like you know like carrots carrots will last in the refrigerator for quite uh, a long time and they're a very good source of vitamin a for the eyes um and there are other foods that you can that you can buy i don't adv- i don't advocate um using white potatoes but yams are very very good and they will last so you don't have to go and run to the market to buy yams uh, more than every couple of weeks so in order to save money if you keep out of the uh, store and when you only buy what you need um and try to eat wisely, you'll be able to buy the foods that do have nutrient value. You don't need that much if you eat the right foods. The only reason people uh, uh, buy these, go to the market and they stock up on all these foods, and you can see some uh, people, like uh, uh, when I go to Costco and I walk people's baskets, they're putting all kinds of things in their baskets that they don't really need that are setting themselves up for bad health. So you can cut back. And then you won't be craving the foods that aren't uh, giving you the nutrients you need. Uh, The reason people want so much is because they're not getting the nutrition in the foods that they're buying. So it would save money. It would save people money. That's interesting because also I noted that you wrote uh, at one time, that uh, you were always bombarded constantly with the question, where are you getting your protein? And uh, you said that most are unaware that some of the largest animals in the world are vegetarians like elephants, giraffes, gorillas, dinosaurs, et cetera. I threw in dinosaurs. <laughs> of Obama, my book, Obamasaurus. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. He was a very healthy Ant- vegetarian, Obamasaurus. <laughs> Antelopes, buffalo, elks. These are massive animals, and they don't eat meat. So you get protein yeah. from almost every food. Every food actually has protein in it. And if you have the ability to sit down and analyze what you're eating in one day, you're going to find out that you're eating four times more protein than your body actually needs. And when you have the excessive protein in your body, what you're doing, you're setting yourself up for cancer and heart disease and all kinds of different diseases because you're getting too much protein. And too much fat yeah. and too many carbs. 
So people, if they knew how to eat right, and I think that they should start teaching children in first grade how to uh, analyze their food. I think this is very important. It would keep them well. If they just thought about what the sugar is going to be doing to them, it's going to make them hyperactive. It's going to uh, cause them to have, um, you know, uh, uh, they won't get along. When they took the sugar away from some, they did a study in Los Angeles in a prison there, um, and they took the sugar away from the inmates. The inmates settled down, and they don't realize how hyper uh, children get when they have these chemicals in their body from processed foods, and the sugar is the worst. Well, I remember... It's, it's literally um, the worst. As an advocate for justice, uh, when I was uh, out there leading marches for <laughs> against injustices, hitting the newspapers around the country, um, <laughs> and uh, I remember there was a case in the news where somebody, I don't know if they just, I can't remember now if they just injured somebody or killed somebody, I didn't remember, but their defense was that they had eaten, I think it was like, candy bars or something, too many candy bars, and they had too much sugar in their system, and it caused them to, you know, act out against that person. Was that the Twinkie defense? The Twinkie Twinkie defense? defense. You remember that? Yeah, the Twinkie defense. But it was based on Uh sugar. Yeah. 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 That was amazing. I never forgot that. Sugar can make you go crazy. Yeah, and that's what his defense was, that he ate so many Twinkies that he he was high on sugar. And yeah, that, yeah. You know, and what's amazing to me, too, was during the lockdowns, we can't talk about the CV, but during the lockdowns, uh, when they told kids they couldn't go to school uh, unless they uh, complied with you-know-what, um, that... Um, they w- and if they did comply, they were going to give them free donuts. Do you remember that? Free donuts. Free oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, how you know healthy what? was that? <laughs> yeah. Well, the whole thing is the government does not know anything about nutrition, and there are certain industries that it's promoting. So uh, this is what's happening both in the hospitals and in rest homes. I don't know whether you know this. My mother was in a rest home, and she said to me, time she had any meat, she was like in her late 80s, she said that it absolutely wore her out trying to digest it, and she didn't want it, and and that they were pushing her to eat the meat and drink the milk, and she said that it was wearing her out. And I found out that the government was the one that makes the woman in the home said, well, uh, this is what the state tells us we've got to feed the people. So the state is forcing their non-nutrition views on people in the rest homes. And they don't know what they're doing, and they know nothing about nutrition, and they're simply promoting foods that they're, you know, pushing and our our USDA, uh, Agriculture Department, uh, they're not doing anything about our soil, and our soil is going to hell. They're not doing anything about uh, teaching people about eating the right foods, telling them you should eat a lot of raw food, too. They don't mention the word raw food. Raw food is the food that has the most nutritional value, and the food that you can eat the most that with which is raw is fruit and nobody even even the health people are shying away from telling people to eat fruit and it has yes. more value you know yes. they say it has too much sugar you know they'll say that fruit has too much sugar and that um you know they're worried about the carbs well fruit comes in a package with fiber and when it has a lot of fiber it negates the uh sugar action in the fruit so fruit is one of the best sources and you don't have to cook it and it's tasty 
Yeah, you said something also. You wrote that um, our 32-inch, 32-long intestinal tract was designed primarily, uh, or foot, 32-long intestinal tract was designed primarily for the consumption of fruit and green plants, and fruit are the food of a near ancestor whose DNA is only 16% different than ours, the gorilla. <laughs> I, thought that was I know people don't want to look at a gorilla and say, oh, we uh, 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 that's an ancestor. But of all the animals, they have the same uh, uh, fingers, the same toes, you know, they each have, uh, like ours, and they have what you call the grasping thumb. And the grasping thumb is uh, in order to pluck things off the bush they have the grasping thumb we have the grasping thumb we do not have claws to catch an animal and hold it and we don't have the teeth to rip it off now the the gorilla uh the same thing most gorillas unless they're uh you know like driven by absolute hunger they don't eat uh meat and um people think meat is necessary and i went you know, 50 years without beef. I haven't, I don't eat beef. Um, uh, occasionally I'll have some fish. Um, and like at Thanksgiving, my children have always kind of pushed me into having some turkey. But uh, when I think of how much in protein there is in four ounces of turkey, there's 43 grams of turkey in four ounces. That's more protein than a human being needs in one day. So people, if they knew how much protein they needed and realized how much they're overeating as far as protein is concerned, and if you knew that excess protein could cause cancer or heart disease or make you ill, you'd think twice about eating the excess protein. So when I eat, I'm aware um, you know, like at Thanksgiving, it's so easy to overeat. Uh, you're not going to stop with one four-ounce piece of turkey, and you're going to just go. Is when you hit a hundred points, for me, that's like four times more protein than I need in one day. And people, people yeah, you, are just not aware. You also said that uh, the chimps, the, the monkeys called the chimps, uh, chimpanzees. Um, are closer, well, you said humans are closer to chimps in our DNA, but I wonder because chimps are meat eaters and will even eat their young. Gorillas are family oriented. Mm-hmm. So there's, yeah, that, there's a that's there. a thought, isn't it? That's a thought. The yeah. gorillas are family oriented, that chimps don't have it, and yet their diet is different than the gorillas. The chimps will eat anything and they are are kind of like erratic and you can't trust a chimp because uh, you might think oh that chimp is so sweet and the next thing you know that chimp is eating your face they are very very uh, voracious and they will eat anything that actually happened that actually happened to a lady who had a chimp as a pet and he turned on her and ate her face Oh yeah, it was in the news. Yeah, a few years back. Oh yeah, I was shocked. Uh-huh. I was, yeah, people oh, aren't you know. thinking that these that the meat can make people more carnivorous. I know this. In 1980, I wrote a uh, a treatise. I got a copyright on it. Cheryl's Hope for Diet Information: An Aid to Higher Consciousness. And I put in there that when I became a vegetarian, a few years later, uh, uh, my consciousness absolutely changed. And I started writing music, words and music. It's like it lifts you when you get away from eating meat. It's it's like you go to another level um, when you realize you really don't need it. Uh, it's expensive. You don't need to put the money out for it. And it does change your consciousness. 
So uh, I do think that becoming a, a vegetarian changed me a great deal as far as my consciousness. At first, I wasn't thinking about consciousness. I was thinking when I read that Health Secrets from Europe, uh, uh, Pablo Rola wrote that he could tell a woman health by looking at her face you know he said that he could tell uh, if a person smoked because you could see the lines around their mouth and I started thinking uh oh I've been smoking you know I had smoked about 15 years and uh, I had lines around my mouth and I thought uh oh uh, I better stop but when I finished that book uh, uh, it was like mind Boggling! I thought I am doing everything that's causing AIDS. I'm eating a pound of meat a day. I, I'm smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. I'm drinking ten cups of coffee a day. And and when I finished the book, I said, "Oh, uh, I'm doing everything wrong." And I said to the Creator, "I said, take my addictions off of me. I don't want to be addicted to these foods anymore." And so I said a prayer. I woke up the next morning. I had absolutely no addiction to cigarettes whatsoever. I stopped. I have never gone back to the smoking. Um, I, I never went back to eating meat. And it was like about uh, 15 years or so uh, before I had, I went to uh, Greece. I had a little bit of lamb when I was in Greece because I couldn't find uh, food that I needed to eat while I was traveling, and when you go into the Greek islands, they don't have much fruit. So I had some lamb when I went into the Greek islands, but um, I didn't go back. I didn't stay with it, and uh, I keep away from meat because it's just too much protein in it. And um, I'm doing great, and I have this to say. My mind is functioning better today at 89 than it was when I was 29. Um, oh, wow. I can think, you're, I can you're think so, better. You are, on, my goodness, you have a great mind. So that says a lot. I mean, proof is in the pudding there. And um, you also wrote, um, the organs in the body break down internally from not receiving the enzymes necessary for the assimilation of nutrients and health problems. And then you said um, people have to be aware that all processed foods sitting on grocery shelves were designed to make money for the producer. And that um, I found this interesting, that few people eat enough raw food to counter the amount of processed and cooked they consume, and raw foods have enzymes enzymes processed and heated food have none yes and look yes. we're all microwaving as soon, today too as soon as you go over about 125 they used to say 118 but i think it's around 125 degrees um that the enzymes can't exist when they are uh when you're hit with heat and Think about what happens when most of the foods that are being processed are processed at maybe 350 degrees there for an hour. There's absolutely nothing left. So they have to put these synthetic vitamins and minerals into the food. And what they're putting into them usually are very cheap vitamins and minerals that really do nothing for the human body. And when you see, it's amazing that people can live as long as they do, uh, but they don't look good and they're, and they're suffering and they don't feel good and they have aches and they have pains. And uh, I can say this, I have no aches, I have no pains. I don't take medication for any physical problem there is. I don't have a problem because I try to stick. I'm not 100% perfect, but I do try to stay with primarily a lot of fruit and vegetables. And, you know, they advocate, you know, using like at least 10 four-ounce servings of fruit and vegetables daily. Sometimes I get 15 or 16. 
um, fruits and vegetables a day. And when you get the fruits and vegetables that haven't been processed, they are anywhere from 75 to 95% water. So you're getting what you call uh, natural organic water when you're buying organic fruits and vegetables. And this is That's where it. you can get a lot of your water. Thank you so much, Barbara. The time went by really fast, and we have to say goodbye. But thank you so much for the wealth of information. And I hope everyone reads your uh, Barbara's newsletter, Journey to Wellness, at substack.com. And God bless you, Barbara. Keep up the good work, and we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, love. Thank you so much for inviting me. Bye-bye, dear. You're welcome. Bye. And that's all we have time for. Barbara Cheris has left the building. Barbara Cheris, C-H-A-R-I-S dot substack dot com forward slash journey to wellness. She's also an author. You can look her name up online. And that's all we have time for. Thank you for listening. Be sure to bookmark and follow Colombo Chronicles live every Wednesday. Obamasaurus, the new book by Rose M. Colombo, is an updated version of a political satire that reflects the political roadmap of today's world, written with an Orwellian twist. Will humanity survive or suffer depopulation or extinction? Obamasaurus by Rose M. Colombo, available at Amazon.com. Well, my friends, time flies. And now is the time to say goodbye. Thanks so much for being part of the Colombo Chronicles family. You are appreciated. Please do it now. Bookmark. Push that like, share, and follow button. Oh, and don't forget to comment below and stay in touch. Make your family part of the Colombo family. Until next Wednesday at noon, remember, God loves you, and so does the Rose.